Okay. Okay. Um, so I'm Dave. This is Yusuf. Um, we're going to talk. I guess maybe a slightly different flavor than some of these <coughs> other talks, which have been about you know, specific applications and then trying to come up with techniques that you can apply them. Um, for our project, we're thinking more about um, a particular technique, which is Gaussian process regression, and trying to think about ways in which we could um, make it more scalable or more applicable to some um, I mean, to some of these other larger problems that people are talking about. So just a brief review. Um, so Gaussian process regression is a kernel method. Um, it's fully probabilistic, so it's really it's really doing a form of Bayesian inference on functions, where you have some prior distribution on functions. Um, it's given by a Gaussian process. Um, and then you work some magic, and you predict a mean and a variance. Um, you know, given some test data, you predict a conditional mean and a conditional variance um, at, at points that you can query it for. So you start out with some prior distribution. You get a bunch of test data. And then now you have some much more constrained distribution on functions. And so this is um, uh, this is a very a very powerful you know, technique for you know, doing basically any sort of nonlinear regression. Um, anytime you want to do anything which requires you know, being able to understand the uncertainty of your predictions, working with Bayesian modeling, um, it's, it's a it's a really useful method to be able to use. Um, and so in in particular, um, we we've, we've picked out. Um, a, a, a few data sets um, from, from various different sources. Um, this first one is actually um, coming from another research problem that I'm working on. Um, these, these second couple are just um, a few that we, we found on the web, um, predicting, um, you know, pre given, given a bunch of audio features of a song, predict the year that it was released. Given um, you know, some configuration information about a robot arm, predict the, the <coughs> proper amount of torque that you want to apply. And this, um, this first one is predicting um, propagation times for a, a seismic wave from an event to a station. But so I mean, these are these are general regression problems, um, and the important the important features as far as you know, scalability goes are how large is the training set and what is the dimensionality of your input space. Um, and so um, you know, here we have you know training training sets on the order of tens of thousands to hundreds of thousands of points, and dimensionality from you know, relatively small five dimensions up until something you know, a little bit larger, 90 dimensions. Okay. So as they stated, like one of the two things you are interested in Gaussian process is the mean and the variance. And mean is actually expressed in this form, so there is like a matrix vector multiplication, a matrix inversion, and like if you have huge data, obviously like this takes too much time. So inversion of this gram matrix takes n cube if you do some naive thing. Just prediction, assuming that you have this structure over here, takes n time. So other than that, even storing the kernel matrix requires n squared. And like if you just use the data David just showed you, you cannot store this in the fast memory. You are, you are supposed to store this kernel matrix in slow memory. So each time you want to go read something from the kernel matrix, you're supposed to go to the disk and read that. So it would be <coughs> pretty slow to do that. So there are some approximation methods that have been applied in Gaussian processes. Sparse approximations. In sparse approximations, you solve a linear system approximately as sparse as possible. There are reduced rank approximations. In this case, you just solve it in a subspace of interest. There are like lots of stuff, the random features is one of the stuff you're interested in. It's pretty useful and recent, you can also check that. So there's Bayesian committee machine, there's space partitioning trees like KD trees and cover trees, which lets you partition your data. And there are fast multiple methods like fast Gauss transform and improved Gauss transform, which allows you to speed up your matrix vector multiplications, which is something really important if you want to do subspace methods. So in low rank approximations, what is being done is that like this mean equation can be represented as a sum like this. So as you see, this lambda i's over here are actually uh, the eigenvalues of the gram matrix, actually the kernel matrix. I'm sorry. So if your spectrum is not flat, right, uh, the eigenvalues with the the eigenvectors with the high eigenvalues are important for you. So you can just go and solve it 
in that subspace of interest. So, in general, inverting that matrix will require n cube operations, but one single quantity gradient step will take n squared time. So, like, if you just do it in a subspace of size q, then it will cost qn squared. And it's also it's equivalent to representing your kernel matrix in a low rank space like this. So, but the issue here is that like you don't know your subspace of interest. Like you don't know which eigenvalues are high, which eigenvalues are low. And just doing that will require an eigenvalue decomposition, which is n cube operations. So there are some random techniques which lets you do that, like Nystrom's method, and also there are some random and greedy subset selection methods, and also there are random features method. The, we are planning to use random features and actually like our kernel and most of the operations are Gaussian kernels so we are going to use the random Fourier features. Random Fourier features have been used like in a lot of applications and it's kind of a very successful application and one of the good things about random features is that you don't need to construct your kernel explicitly so you can just use your random features and you don't even need to store any kernel matrix information. So I guess David is um, so another, um, just give you one, one other, one other way that people have thought, sort of from a, a different direction of um, speeding up um, like kernel regression, is to have some sort of data structure like a KD tree that does a, you know, so KD trees in particular form a, a hierarchical partitioning of your data space. So they, you know, find some essentially a tree of separating hyperplanes, um, or splitting planes, and you can represent this in a data structure that lets you do really efficient um, nearest neighbors lookup. Um, so not to go into um, too much detail, but, pe but people, people have been able to, to apply this to, um, to speeding up, you know, essentially finding you know, when you're doing regression, when you're evaluating the kernel at a query point against other points, um, to finding the points who are going to be closest and with whose kernel values are going to matter the most and then finding points which are going to be further away, which maybe you don't have to actually evaluate the kernel at every point. Maybe you can do some approximation, you know, average the average kernel values over some you know, just region of your space and not have to um, compute the kernel at every point when you're doing the prediction or, or during the training process. Um, so this is, this is another approach that people have taken. Um, people have, um, you know, at least in the published literature, the only type of space partitioning tree that people have um, people have applied to this problem is a KD tree, um, and KD trees are um, you know, one, of, one of their big drawbacks is that they you know, they essentially don't work in high dimensional spaces. They you know, the, um, they essentially lose all of their computational advantages. Um, so people actually have there are cover trees and ball trees, for example, or other other data structures that people have come up with um, you know, to fill some more roles which don't have these same problems. So one of, one of, our, one of our potential ideas is to apply um, some of these newer space partitioning tree structures to, um, to similar techniques to see if that can speed up regression on some high dimensional data sets. Um, yeah, so, so basically we're, um, we're, we're still exploring exactly the space of you know, what all the options are, but our, our, our essential plan is to try and see if we can, you know, on some of these larger data sets, some of these higher dimensional data sets, um, you know, start out by seeing, so we haven't done any implementation yet, but we want to see, you know, essentially what techniques work and then see if there's a way to, you know, integrate, you know, several of these past techniques, you know, like maybe some improvements on the space partitioning trees and combining that with um, some sort of, you know, iterative, maybe course defined, um, uh, you know, successively, um, successively higher rank approximations using some of these like um, low rank approximation tools, and seeing if, seeing if there's a way we can put that together, you know, put all this together into some nice algorithm um, that'll do better than people have done before. Um, so that's that's our hope. I think that's yeah. that's, that's all we have. Thank you.